Hello, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are here today with two of our friends. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that we have Val Krieger and Miriam Bott. And they are two amazing uh, friends, women, teachers, designers, and long arm quilters. <laughs> We're so happy you're here. Hello. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hello. And so also we have uh, the quilt on the wall and the quilt on the table are theirs. And we will let them tell you about it. So we will start with Marion. Her quilt is on the wall. This quilt is scrappy. It is called Regimental Stars. It is red crinoline, Paula Barnes, and um, it's Civil War reproduction. It's, it's not, a new, not a new pattern, but it's been out for a little while, but it's one of my favorites because I'm a scrap scrappy person <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it and you quilted it too i'm i did assuming. quilt with yes. a feather Beautiful. okay a little uh, bit dense feather marion yes. style marion style. Style. style yeah <laughs> i love it okay so val's got the quilt on the table and the quilt on the table is a quilt i designed um and it was in american patchwork and quilting in february of 2015 so i designed this pattern i pieced this pattern and i quilted it and i brought it today because it um, shows some of my custom quilting that i do um, mostly for customers so this quilt was called get comfy and I think it's, uh, I think it was Homestead Gatherings fabric from Lisa Bongina Primitive Gatherings was the fat quarter tower that I used to make this quilt. So most of the patterns I design use fat quarters. Yeah, I love it. And I feel like I saw you working on this one and I remember seeing this one on your machine. I, so that was fun mm -hmm. that you guys both brought quilts that I'd already seen before. Uh, Val has another quilt just kind of draped over our ladder and I think... When we do the editing, Billy can put up a picture of this one too. But do you want to talk about the sure, quilt on the ladder? Sure, this quilt um, is a sew along that I'm going to be doing with Lisa Bonjean with Primitive Gathering starting in um, June, July. And that is with her new Garden Gatherings line. Um, it, we will be having a YouTube series teaching um, each component of the quilt. So it'll be a sew along. Um, you use five different rulers, so it makes everything really precise and exact. Um, it it wouldn't be the first quilt I made, but it could be something a newbie can do because everything is um, made a little bit bigger and then sized down. But it's super scrappy. Um, again, it uses fat quarters. Uh, I'm really excited to do it. And that is called Meet Me in the Garden. And it's a sew along um, with Primitive Gatherings. And local quilt shops are also going to be able to carry that pattern. Um, so if your local quilt shop doesn't have it, I'm sure you can um, find it on Primitive Gatherings or... Um, I also teach at the Christmas Goose in Las Vegas, and she'll be carrying those patterns as well. Awesome. I know. I can't. We were all talking about it before. Marion and I are trying to get an advanced copy so we can <laughs> start <laughs> sewing start. now. Get yes. Start. Chomping at the bit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, anything that you want to... No, Add, or I think I just... want to join in if it's <laughs> sized <laughs> bigger then I feel a little more confident using all the different rulers and yeah. stuff and like. actually so the the big quilt the meet me in the garden version is 104 inches square but I'm oh, going to okay. give you a row quilt option that's like a twin size bed oh. so if you're overwhelmed at making a lot of yeah. that same block it's a smaller amount I think it's six blocks of one instead of 48 blocks of that. That's one. So right up my alley. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll have to join in with that option. Yeah, yeah the, the, row quilt, the row quilt option. And so the big one, a king size. Yes, king size. Oh, and yeah. that wow. doesn't even have um, any outer border on it. So if you needed it to be a little bit bigger, if you had a California um, king, right. you could add a three or four inch border all the way around and definitely would make it big enough. And the other fun thing, this is wow. the first time I'm kind of doing something in collaboration with my daughter, Katie Nolan, um, of Count Your Stitches Design. She's designing a cross stitch no. of the medallion oh. quilt and a oh cross stitch of the row quilt. So it's going to oh. be awesome. Oh um, my for, goodness. So all the cross stitchers out there, if they don't want to 
do the quilting part, they can cross stitch along. So. Oh, and I don't think I knew that. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. She's, she's actually started stitching it, and wow, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. See, yeah. the king size is intriguing to me now too, though, because one of my goals is to make a quilt for our bed. Yes. And oh, well, and that's yeah. made out of the Garden Gatherings collection. Yeah. But you could do a scrappy version with your collections. Yeah. You know, yeah. you could that's easily do it too. Yeah. <laughs> the backgrounds are all fat quarters. The um, color fabrics are all fat quarters. So, if that's not your colorway, um, you know, do it out of your own fabrics. Yeah. Oh. Who wants to quilt a quilt that big for me? <laughs> Ladies. I bet, I bet we have a couple people that would do it. Uh, guess who's quilting that one? <laughs> yeah, Marion's going to be oh, quilting yeah. mine. Yes. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, well. Should we dive right in? We're going to dive right in. We are going to begin with having Marion and Val both kind of tell us how they got started quilting and then also kind of move into how they got interested in long arming. We know that we get questions all the time about long arm quilting and we don't really feel confident to answer them. So they're going to also answer some things I know. uh, uh, Listeners want to know. Listeners, Yeah, this is going to be a great episode. So I don't know. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) My, I don't have a, it's not a great, you know, oh, wow, I have family members that quilt. I am the only one. And you know, my story started out 30 plus years ago, taken off on a Saturday while my husband watched the kids and I go shopping and I landed in a fabric store, (laughs) which was just a garment store at the time, you know, back then. And uh, really she had a little section and she had partitioned a little section off in her store back there because she was just dabbling in some quilting. And she had a gal from... um, to come in and teach Debbie Mum. I remember uh, Debbie Mum. Samples and oh my gosh. And I got hooked because it was kind of quilting, piecing and crafting. You know, you use a lot of wonder under. A lot of wonder under. Right. So I really just took a couple classes from her and the gal that ended up owning the shop, she decided, heck, I think this is the way to go. And she turned the whole thing over to a quilt. She transformed it into a quilt store. Wow. And really took a couple classes, and the rest is just self-taught. Wow. You know, I've taken a few here and there, and, um, I'm, you know, I feel like I picked up to the, the best part of the of techniques versus I don't feel I have too many bad habits. Right. But that's really my – it's yeah. that simple. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Val. So mine is a little different. I was actually born in Hanover, Pennsylvania, which is like an hour from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So I think it might have been in my blood, in the water or something. Um, I I sewed. I used to make my daughter's clothes when she was little. Um, But my quilting journey actually started probably 28 years ago. Um, We were living in New Jersey because my husband was in the military. And my sister and her husband were living in Maine because her husband was in the Coast Guard. And we went up to visit, I think it was one Thanksgiving weekend. And Leslie and Roger had um, taken an Eleanor Burns class at their previous base. Um, and they had learned like a quilt in a day technique, but she had little quilts hanging around the house and it was Debbie, a lot of Debbie mom stuff. Um, and actually the first block I learned was out of a Debbie mom book and it was her maple leaf pet block. And which I didn't know that that's how you started, <laughs> but, um, Leslie taught me that weekend how to make a maple leaf block. So I'm the oldest of four girls. Leslie's two years younger than me, then my sister Shelly and my sister Emily. So, I came home to New Jersey and made maple leaf table runners, maple leaf pot holders, maple leaf wall hangings until I (laughs) could make that maple leaf block inside out. And then I found a um, continuing education program at the college that was nearby McGuire Air Force Base. And I signed up for that. So I went with my rotary cutter and my mat and my sewing machine, and I got there and it was a hand quilting class. And I thought, Ooh, okay, I'm here to learn. So I made my one wall hanging that was totally by hand. Scissors, uh, cardboard templates, 
Um, I hand pieced it. I hand quilted it. I attached my binding by hand and wow. tacked it down by hand. So no machine touched that one. Wow. I still have that little wall hanging. <laughs> um, but after that, um, the ladies are like, "Where are you coming back next time?" You know, to the class again. And I said, "As long as I can bring my sewing machine." So they were fine with that. So I brought my sewing machine. So again, a lot was self-taught because that original group, most of them hand quilted. So. I bought lots of magazines. I bought, you know, books. So Debbie Mum, Fonz and Porter, those were some of the books that I really used a lot. Um, little Quilts, I can't remember the author and of that one. It's, it's and it's Thimble on the Berries. table over there, Little yeah, Quilts. Yeah, <laughs> so those were all those things that kind of inspired me um, to keep going. So then my sister Leslie continued to quilt. Um, I quilted. I started teaching quilting at a local quilt shop in 2001 here in Vegas. Um, my mom and dad had a quilt shop from 2007 to 2019, I think they, or 20, 2020. They closed in February 2020, right when the pandemic all started, just before it actually they closed. So my sister Leslie taught my mom how to quilt. I taught my mom how to quilt. We subsequently taught our sisters how to quilt. My dad probably knows more about quilting than he ever thought he did, but he's an engineer, so he loved figuring out how many squares you can get out of fat quarter. Um, <laughs> you know, so yes, that's how I started um, quilt. Wow. You know, piecing, becoming a piecer. Wow, I love it. I, I I love how you know we've all kind of got like these really similarities, even though the stories are different. Yeah, you know, how many quilters did Debbie Mum or Quilt in a Day or oh, Little Quilts. Little Quilts. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. oh, fun. And that's where we got our love of collecting fabric back then. Yeah. <laughs> because I probably, I would go every Saturday to new quilt stores or quilt stores in Vegas. At the time, we had quite a few. Yeah. And it was, I did a lot of collecting. Uh -huh. And that's, I did that same thing because mm -hmm. most quilt stores, when I first started quilting, they'd like have a color of the month and they'd have a yeah. sale on that color. So, and I like, you know, most of those books and things that we had were all like scrappy quilts. So you had lots of different purples or lots of different blues. So that was a great way uh, to build up your stash was when that color went on sale, you could just go in and buy fat quarters of all the purples. And then yeah. the next month it might be reds, but... It sure has gotten easier with like how you guys design. You design a whole collection based around that color theme. And it's nice because you can buy that fat quarter grouping of that whole and you have a scrappy quilt right there. Yeah. Where when we first started, it didn't seem like that was how, right. I mean, everything was segmented by color or right. um, type of fabric yeah. or whatever. But now it's so much easier because everything's kind of grouped and yeah. you can can go from there, I think. Yeah. I remember seeing my first fat quarter bundle on the shelf at the old Christmas goose. Yeah. And just drooling over it, basically <laughs> like how amazing would that be to have mm -hmm. a whole bundle mm -hmm. already coordinated for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now we want to know what how did what made you jump into long arm quilting? So I'll go first on this one because <laughs> I started before you. That's right. And, and you sold me my machine. I did. I did. <laughs> wow. So I have been, um, you know, I was an Air Force wife. So most of the jobs I had had during that time weren't really full-time jobs because um, as an Air Force wife, we move. And I lived in Texas. We lived in England. We lived in New Jersey. And then we moved to Las Vegas in 1996. Um, and But I've, we've stayed here since then. Um, but most of the jobs I had were um, part-time jobs because I had kids, so I didn't work full-time. But because I quilted a lot, I was having a lot of quilts quilted. You know, if you're quilting you know, having 20 or more quilts quilted a year, you're spending a lot of money <laughs> having that done, right? So I decided, well, hey, I think this is something I might be able to do. And I thought, well, if nothing else, I can quilt my 20 quilts a year, yeah. you know, and, and eventually pay off the machine because I did that. So I was looking at it as a supplement to my to income for our household. 
So I got my long arm in 2004, and mine is not computer operated. Mine is a hands-on. It doesn't work unless my hands are touching it. But I did. I started out doing a lot of panographs, so edge-to-edge quilting. Um, dabbled a little bit in custom in the beginning. So in the beginning, I was probably doing 95% edge-to-edge quilting and about 5% custom quilting. Um, and now I do the reverse of that. Yeah, it's probably 80, 20, but, um, cause I still do some edge to edge, but mostly I do, um, custom work, but that was how I got into it. And then in the early two, well, probably two years after I had my machine, I was contacted by the, um, dealer that sold those machines and wanted to know if I wanted to be a Las Vegas sales rep. And that's when Marion... I sold her her long arm machine as and, a sales rep. And did you guys already know we each knew other? Yes. We knew okay. each other from okay. quilting. Okay. Yes. yes, we knew each other okay. from yes. from a quilt shop that's no longer in Las Vegas. Right. But that's how we had met was through that okay. that shop. Mm-hmm. And I was excited. I had already purchased a long arm probably three years prior, a hand guided, no stitch regulator, and. If anybody knows me, you all three do, I have no patience. (laughs) So I had it set up in my garage, and I would dabble with it a little bit. But again, I just, I I have no patience. (laughs) So I just wouldn't put in the time to do it. I'm not an artistic person. Um, Stick figures is what I draw. (laughs) And so I thought, all right, this didn't work out. She was the person I bought that machine from was my actual quilter that quilted my quilts before, and she was moving. So I sold it. And then a couple years later, well, I had already known Val. She was the sales rep, and and heck, I was right on board. But this time I'm I'm going computerized. (laughs) And I thought, you know, heck, what a perfect time because it was her and another friend of ours that were selling them. And I thought, oh, I get one-on-one instruction. I'm the luckiest person in the world. (laughs) I'm not computer techie. I, so, but they showed me and then there came a point where when I was calling them to cry because I was stuck, something happened. They're like, I think you need to figure this out for yourself. That was the end of the instruction. (laughs) And I did. I really, I took my time with it. And there's, there was plenty of times I really wanted to throw the whole thing in the pool. Um, (laughs) It it was a learning curve because I'm not, like I said, techie or anything, but, and I don't like to pick out. So that, that worked out perfect. And, um, from then on, I just have been quilting. I really did the same thing. I thought, oh, I want to quilt my own quilts too, and and then that just went to the wayside. It doesn't happen. It went Marianne to the wayside. Quilts more quilts of mine than I <laughs> yeah. quilt of my own. <laughs> so I, you know, all my quilts are piled up in my closet to be quilted. But anyway, I I love it now just as much as I after I got through that learning curve. I really liked it, and I still love it. I I haven't lost that. I love that. that like I love the passion that. is still there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though mm-hmm. you're doing it for other people, mm-hmm. that you still love it. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, And I'm a tad bit of a perfectionist as far as, I mean, we can never get to that point, but I really, really do treat everybody's quilt as if I made it because I know how much goes into it, how much time, how much money. And so I really try to to put out what I think is the best, you know, that I can do. And I do nothing but edge to edge now. I used to do a little custom. I've custom my own quilts, but I just, I really like the edge to edge. And now I pretty much put edge to edge on. Well, and you've made that edge your style. Yes. You know, if anyone knows Marion's quilting, it's very tight. Yes. um, Very dense. mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's become, that's your kind of signature Mm -hmm. look. so. So my customers, they, um, they just let me do my thing and they give me their quilt because they know I don't even say, Hey, do you want me to lighten it up a little bit? And they're like, just do what you need to do. Right. Yeah. So that works out. I feel like, yeah, sometimes it's just like, that's such a decision that I love just being able to, you know, whether I'm giving a custom quilt to Val Mm -hmm. or an edge to edge to you, I love just being able to say, just 
do it so I don't have to make any well, there more are decisions. Well, times where I've called you up and said, I'm completely brain dead right now. Can yeah. you help me out a little bit? You know, yeah. were you, did you have a vision and you've thrown things at me and I might have you know, squashed them, but I might have, yeah. at least put <laughs> me on it, at least put me on yeah. another road to, you yeah. know, because they do. There's a lot of times I have, I struggle with well, patterns. And I think you and I do that to each mm-hmm. with each other. Thankfully we have similar styles. We quilt for same people, you know, mm-hmm. some of the same customers. And sometimes you get, you know, like, oh, what am I going to put on that final border? Or, Val, which one of these designs do you think looks better on mm-hmm. this quilt? You know, it, sometimes it's a, a good collaboration mm-hmm. of making that decision. Sometimes you just need somebody to say, yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's a good option, you know, or that's, you Or know. she can say, yeah. you know, I think something needs a feather, and then I'll get plumes in my head and go that direction. You know, maybe it might not be a feather feather, but then that takes me into, oh, yeah, it does need some curvy plumes, you yeah, know. Yeah, right. So, yeah. yeah, we we do. We bounce off each other. It's great. We actually send, you know, if I get a customer that brings me a quilt and I feel that it's just, it needs custom, you know, I do my best to suggest it. If they're insistent that I do an edge to edge, that's fine too. You know, I'll do it. I just... Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times I'll say, no, I think Val needs to handle this one, you know, well, especially. She's done that with you yes. too, yes. right? That, yeah. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. yes, I can edge edge it, but this would be better custom. Yeah. Right? Especially yeah. when there's a lot of light and a lot of dark, you know, two color quilts or or just white and other colors, you know, I where you really need to, where I really need to use a darker thread, but I don't want to because it's all on that white. So then I kind of try to sway them over to, um, getting it custom. I mean, you know, it is what it is. They, if they don't want to, they don't want to, and that's fine. Yeah. I just, you know, so. Yeah. No, I feel like we should just kind of back up a tiny bit. I probably should have done this at the beginning, but just to kind of share how Val and Marion and I all got to know each other. <laughs> so I can't remember the year, but I know Chelsea was in high school and oh, I was driving. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I was, and I think I started quilting about the same time you did, because I think it's been about 28 years. I didn't ever make Chelsea a baby quilt, so I started quilting (laughs) after, but my youngest son, I made him a baby quilt, so anyway. But I was driving in with a friend to go to a stitching group in Las Vegas at a quilt shop called Pink Ladies. Well, the quilt shop's Christmas goose, but the class was Pink Ladies. Yes, the class, yes, thank you. I'm I'm trying to like get all this... And so we were, and the projects we were working on in there kind of put embroidery and quilting together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Marion and Val were both in the class. And I feel like there were maybe 10 of eight to 10. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. But, you know, I kind of like mostly talked to my friend. But, you know, we, we talked as a class. Well, then fast forward several years in 2013 I went to Lisa Bonjean's for a quilting retreat with a bunch of uh I was invited by another friend and I walked in and you were sitting at your sewing machine and it's just the strangest thing you know you come from Nevada and you're in Wisconsin and here's a friend that you've only ever seen at a quilt shop in Las Vegas in Las Vegas <laughs> sitting there and it it was I was like wow and then we you know how do I know oh Christmas goose so anyway that was kind of uh shortly after that you know Chelsea and I started doing fabric and I contacted Val about quilting Mm -hmm. some of our first quilts and then you said you really got to have Marion do some of the edge do some of the edge to edge and then it's like that's history. Rest is history. Yes. Rest is history, guys. <laughs> so, so, and Chelsea's no longer in high school. Yeah, and Chelsea's no, no longer in high school. Over the hill. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> so, but uh, we do have a few questions. We were wondering, how do you determine a pattern when a customer just says, just pick something? Well, for me... It's a few things. Um, number one, is it traditional Civil War 
uh, reproduction fabric or modern or, you know, that kind of determines it right there. Um, if it's, if it is a more of a civil war traditional or something like that, it's usually just a few patterns I like to do, which is feathers, Baptist fans, you know, stippling even works. It's just that in that time period. Um, but for quilts, like when I quilt for you guys, which I love cause you just do your thing, you know, <laughs> I get to really expand. So I, it's been a few years now, but you know, I got into those geomet all that geometric patterns yep. and, and then, uh, just start tightening those things up and I just love the texture of it. So um, that's pretty much a lot of times I'll even look at the fabric and say, oh, well, there's a little leaf in there with a certain type of a flower. So if I'm going to put kind of a flower on, I might try to find something that, re you know, resembles that flower or that leaf type thing. Um, I do have a kind of a rule. I, I don't necessarily follow it all the time. I try to, but I, anything with points, triangles, points, stars, anything, I try to do something with a radius, you know, um, if it's squares, rectangles, then I like to do stuff with points and, you know, I kind of do it that way. I don't like to have my quilting fight with the pattern and I don't like to have it so overwhelmed. So in other words, you know, they're, you know, sometimes I'll get something and, you know, they might want, you know, if they request something like something like flowers, it might stand out too much and they need something to calm it down because really you want to see the quilt, not necessarily the quilting all the time, you know? Right. So that's really how I do it. I just, you know, I just take it like, a, and I get stuck. There's a lot of times I get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's so many patterns that you're able to choose from yes. too. Lots of new yeah. designers, yes. lots of um yeah, you know, yeah. options. Mm -hmm. I think that's so good for people to hear that even you get stuck. Oh. Cuz I think that people worry about that sometimes and they yeah. shouldn't that it's just natural mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And the way I approach it is very similar. I look at the fabrics being used, a design in the fabric. Are there lots of open places for quilting? So would, um, you know, uh, some type of a repetitive design be in there um, that I can repeat? So sometimes I use stencils. Sometimes I just use chalk lines and get myself, you know, some points of reference so I can um, quilt to that. Again, are the fabrics traditional or are they more contemporary like your lines? Is it light and airy so it can be more flowy or do I do straight lines like I've done in this one? Um, and for me, because I am doing everything hand-guided, I need to know that I can repeat whatever I did to make it look <laughs> right. consistent throughout the quilt. So, you know, I don't want to – it's not like drawing stick figures, but you don't want to put something in one big – empty quilting area and then not do it again in another mm -hmm. empty area. But, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. And a lot of times where I thought it was going to go and how it was going to look isn't how it ended up because it might look good, I'll say, on paper because I really don't draw it out on paper, but it might look like a good idea on paper. But then when I try to go and actually do it in quilting, it doesn't always work that way for me. But right. um, I think by me also starting out doing lots of edge to edges. So when you're doing an edge to edge on a hand guided machine, there's a laser light that you guide along a pattern. And that kind of develops this muscle memory for doing curly cues and flowers and feathers and different things. So you can kind of take that and then do that freehand because you're, you've done it by tracing somebody mm -hmm. else's design, then you kind of have that same um, motion or rhythm when you go to start quilting on, on a quilt. Um, and you can do it freehand where you don't have to be following a pattern. Yeah. So do you think, do you think that, you know, for someone who's not artistic, really, uh, well, like, I don't feel like I'm <laughs> so good with drawing, like, I mean, could I ever sure do mm -hmm. that? Yeah. You know, and and have you either of you ever known someone that didn't quilt that did long arming or yes, yes. Have, and how how was their learning curve like? 
Do you practice, think? practice, just, just, practice, practice. Yeah. And a lot of them will tell you, we have, we have a lot of long armors, but we have a, a friend that is a, also a freehand uh-huh. uh, long armor. And she, it took her a little while, but you know, her, her whole strategy was she would draw it on paper, go to the machine and try to, to replicate that. And it just takes time with that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to a quilt show and there's lots of different types of long arm machines set up. If you're thinking about it, go play on them because we mm-hmm. both have gamels, yes. but that doesn't mean that's going to be the right machine for somebody else because there are so many different types of machines. You know, it it might not. It's like we don't we all drive a car, but we don't all drive the same car. Right. You know, there's yeah. different things about all machines, but I think going to a quilt show where they do have lots of different um, companies set up and you can play. And one of the best things, you know, write your name. Write your name in cursive. I know a lot of kids don't learn cursive anymore, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you first started learning how to write your name in cursive, it wasn't beautiful when you first started doing it. But then the more you wrote it and wrote it and wrote it, you perfected your signature. And it's kind of the same thing with quilting. Write your name, draw circles, do whatever, just kind of start doing that one little thing. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And so I do think that there are lots of options out there for people that aren't necessarily artistic especially with the computerized programs now. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's almost like a click, get it set up, and then it's going to quilt whatever design you chose. Um, But even like with hand-guided machines like mine, there are still pantographs, paper patterns that you can follow that design. And my machine does have a stitch regulator on it. So what I liked about that is when I got my machine, I didn't have to go slow or fast to make my stitches be even. That's the one thing that was regulated on my machine. So there are lots of quilters out there that do free motion quilting and they don't use a stitch regulator because they're so fluid in how they quilt that it's always the same speed. Their stitches end up being the same length. So for me, I thought, well, that's one thing that I don't have to worry about my stitches, whether I went slow or fast, we're always going to be consistent. Um, so that I like that idea. I didn't have to regulate how fast or slow I quilt to make my stitches look even. They're always consistent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And if I can do it, anybody can oh. do it. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I, I actually just thought of something that uh, I know you guys can answer this without, I didn't alert you to this question, but um, what should someone do when they're dropping off a quilt to be quilted? Like, how would, how would you like to receive it? I know uh, at different times, like you've told me, hey, mark the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am sometimes, sometimes I don't worry about that if there's a house block or a heart block. Then I figure, oh, well... They'll know what the top is. Well, it just depends but, on the pattern I choose for right. a computerized. So that's why I like you guys to mark the top. I yeah. like my anybody to mark the top so I know what the top, what you think the top is. Right. Because there's some, even on this type of a quilt, you might think maybe that is the top and maybe I, right. it is. And to me that is, you know, so, and that way, if I do pick a pattern, it's, if it's a directional pattern, I know what is the top. Right. Um, so are there other things that people should maybe do when they bring their quilts well, other than that? Trimming True. loose threads loose off the threads. top. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I'm bad. Yes. Loose threreds. I'm Otherwise, bad. if you're doing an edge, like edge you. they get quilted into yes. your quilt. Oh. Yes. Loose threads, Chelsea. Oh, I'm terrible at that. Um, give, your, give your quilt a haircut. Yeah. You know, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm fortunate. I mean, my customers, I have probably out of a ton – two that want to pick out their pattern. That's it. Uh The rest, they just hand them to me in bags. (laughs) And I just make sure they put their name in the bag. But yes, trim all the loose things off. And, you know, bad or backing is a that's a big one. That's a big one. And it's uh-huh. hard to, I, I, I've always, I've talked to Val before. I'm like, can you do a class on piecing backing? Um, don't cut, ch- now for me, this is strictly my thing. I do not like the salvages cut off. So I don't mind if you, if you're sewing two pieces together and you cut those salvages off where you're sewing, but please don't 
cut the top and the bottom off. Yeah, I think I've done that mm-hmm. now because of you telling mm-hmm. me that. Yeah, it just it's so much straighter mm-hmm. to be able to load it yeah. onto your leaders, right? Yeah. And and keep it even. And double check the size of your quilt to your backing. You know, sometimes there's I'll take a quilt in and I won't be able to get to it, and it'll sit there. And then when I do get to it, I measure the top and I measure the back and mm, I have to call them up and right. You know. I think, you know, most of the time long arm quilters say your quilt should be three to four inches bigger all the way or, or your backing should be three to four inches bigger all the way around than your quilt top. So for me, mathematically, I just round that up that it's five inches bigger. So if your quilt's 80 by 80, you're backing needs to be 90 by 90 Mm -hmm. or maybe 88 by 90 because if you're sewing two lengths of fabric together it's 44 inches wide because mine's computerized i run my patterns off of the tops so i really prefer five inches or more really you know this is all all the way around i've been doing four i've been doing four i I mean i can do it up to one i've I've done it a half don't say that (laughs) but i don't want to (laughs) no No. it's it's miserable so Um, really we should both add a little bit we should mm -hmm. add a little extra i don't feel like yours are an issue but if it's two inches all the way Mm -hmm. around right that's when we get a little stuck because when you're dealing with this 90 pound sewing mm-hmm. head yeah. you know that yeah. i need to have clamps on to get you know to straight keep your backs taut mm-hmm. and you only have the two inches it's really it's, hard for that 90 pound sewing yeah. head not to bump into those clamps yeah. so mm-hmm. oh, um, that's it difficult right. i know that might sound mm-hmm. like i'm speaking a foreign language if you've never seen a quilt loaded but that's why i always suggest hey go to a big quilt show and look how they have things loaded so you know what the clamps are and kind of the process of how a quilt is actually loaded onto a long arm it might make it seem um a little bit easier to understand why mm-hmm. we need our yeah. back and our batting mm-hmm. to be bigger right. than the quilt top. And it is easier for custom because she's there with hands on. I have to tell you, I start my machine and I'm out the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, multi- I'm multitasking, you know, right. so yeah. I don't want it to run into those clamps or run off. So I really prefer right. a little bit more, you know, and since I do sell the batting, um, you know, I really give it, I'm liberal, very liberal with the batting. So I do have a lot of extra on the side, but I try to make, I try to not create problems. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, I, I don't want problems with anything from the start of pinning it on to the creating it. And, you know, I just, I just don't want problems. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> so trimming your quilts, getting mm-hmm. loose threads mm-hmm. off making sure your backing is big enough, and just have communication with your long armor. If you really don't care what they put on, that's fine. But if you say, you know, do whatever, and then in the (laughs) end you don't like it, you know, then you need to make sure you're having a conversation, you know, because maybe there are things that you don't like. So Katie had given me a couple quilts to quilt, And they're very traditional, but she said, Mom, I really don't like feathers. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I didn't know that because I would have probably put a feather on it like that because it's a very traditional star quilt with little sashings. It's very similar to this. But she was like, I, you know... I don't want a feather on it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not sure what I'm going to put on it now. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know, you have to have some communication because there sometimes are likes and dislikes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, I think communication, number one, would be the biggest mm-hmm. thing yeah. is, you know. Um, but usually people are giving you a quilt to quilt because, number one, they've probably seen something that you've quilted. So they like your style. They like the way you do quilt things. But I think those are kind of the biggest. Mm -hmm. Um, Keep your threads. You know, the quilt police aren't going to come and look at the back of your quilt, but if you're quilt piecing like a a quilt that has a lot of light backgrounds and you're using a dark brown thread and you leave really long tails, those dark brown (laughs) threads can show up underneath. So Mm -hmm. if the back of your quilt needs a haircut too, you might want to trim off some of those extra long threads. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) (laughs) So front and back, you know, I mean, because like I said, the quilt police don't, can't see what's in between the layers. It's only if 
your thread ends up darker dark underneath and yeah. and, and yeah. making a shadow um, thinking those so yeah. blue or red yeah, fabrics she knows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she knows i'll have like the, i'll see the deep oh. blue thread and the red one and i'm like oh no yeah <laughs> and i think one other thing as a long arm quilter you know i've had a few customers over the years that want a double-sided quilt okay so maybe they've made a quilt and they want it and they've also made a quilt for the back. Right. Um, it is not easy to get what your border of your back quilt is lined up with the border of your front quilt because everything starts to shrink up. You put that yep. layer of batting in between, things can't stay lined up. So um, I tend to not want to do something like that because especially if it has a lot of seams like this quilt does oh, and yeah. then the quilt on the back does when those seams start to lay – you know, we just have a little sewing hopping foot that's going over those and it can deflect off of bulky seams and especially if there's lots of seams on top and lots of seams on the bottom. So it's not that I don't want you to piece or, you know, sew pieces together for the back, but it's re it really is kind of hard to line those things up mm -hmm. um, evenly and, and make it look like an exact front and back quilt. Mm -hmm. um, so... I guess keep your expectations of that at a reasonable level. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And then just the last thing, like thread, do you, should people tell you what they want or do you? Well, in my case, nobody, yeah. they just don't. It's just, yeah. they just yeah. do what you want to do. Yeah. I'm a blender. Uh -huh. So I will do my best to blend the thread on the top. Right. But I do put the same thread on the – what I put on the top will be on the back. Um, I can I can change that a little bit, but for the most part I don't because I get pokies through. Right. And I don't want – I don't like that look, so I, I do that. But I, I really try to blend as best I can. Um, yeah. And you know. that's my preferred look, too. Right. And, I mean, in yeah. Marion's case, when she's doing edge to edge, it's one thread going over the whole top of the quilt. In my case, with custom quilting, I mean, I think I quilted one quilt. I had 30 different thread colors. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. my because goodness. Because I was matching every little color in that. Right. So it would almost be like doing this quilt, you know, <laughs> yeah. matching every yellow. I'm not going to do that on that quilt. But... When and it really depends, you know, it was a it was a show quilt. It was the quilt someone was putting in the show. So I changed threads a lot. I tried to also match bobbin, um, but for me, um, a lot of times because free motion is a little bit different, you know, you can see your stops and starts a lot more because if mm -hmm. you're stopping and starting at every color, you're, you're going to have a tie off or a knot on the back that you might see. Um, so sometimes I, I do kind of play around changing those bobbin colors um, to, to be like a, a medium of all of those and not have to change bobbins yeah, every time. Right. Now, of course, if it's a light background, then I probably would go with a lighter. But um, for the most part, I do the same. I match my mm -hmm. upper thread to my lower thread. But if you walked into either of our studios, you would know that we have lots of color options. You did not know there were that many shades yeah. of beige <laughs> or even white. I yeah. mean, there's bright mm -hmm. white, there's cool white, there's warm white, there's, you know, lots of different... <laughs> And we have it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, we have probably every color that is made by the mm -hmm. thread companies that we use. And, and yeah. you know, there's times where if I get a quilt in that I can immediately see, okay, I'm using cream on the top, tan on the top or whatever. And then they've given me... Um, Black. A non-busy backing. <laughs> right. Yes. I do right. call them up because I want, when they do come to pick, I just make sure their eyes are wide open, that they understand that right. I, you know, that it's going to be the same color. But I am computerized, so I don't have the stops and starts. You know, yeah. I do right. try my best to make a point to always be able to do one run on a bobbin. Um, I don't, in other words, when I fill a bobbin up, I'll do one row. And if it doesn't use the entire bobbin, I'll still start with a new one on the next row because I don't I don't want it to use that bobbin and then have a thread break and start all over because I just don't like 
Right. The, you got to get the yeah. computer lined back yes, up. Where, and I yeah. don't like that stop and start on the back. Right. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but for me, I like complete, Yeah. you know, quilting. So what do you do with all those half bobbins? Well, sometimes you, they're not half. Oh, so, I guess like a smaller project, you could use it. Well, if I, or, if I load one bobbin, I do the right. top. So then I know on the second row and then every row thereafter how much I used. So that's how I wind them. Oh, that's oh. good. She doesn't fill it all the way up. Yeah, so if I only need a half a bobbin, I right. only lo- I only wind a half a bobbin if it's going to use, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, Tips and tricks. I don't yes. like thread That's breaks. awesome. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. Um, I love that. Especially on with backings that are dark and I, if I'm using a light color thread or, right. you know, I just. I always like yeah. busy backs. Mm-hmm. I love it when a customer gives me a quilt that isn't light or isn't dark. It's kind of in the middle. So maybe if they're using a specific line of fabric, they take that kind of middle print Mm -hmm. that has color and lightness to it. So it's busy. It's not just a solid. Because even if you have to switch colors, so say you have a, like on one of your quilts, I might use a peach and a green and a cream. Right. And if you have one of your floral prints on the back, you don't, those peach and greens don't stand out as much as if they would if you just had one of your... Um, backgrounds that just have a little teeny dot in it, right. you know, yeah. or right. something. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. it, it would just stand off of it. And that's just a personal preference. I mean, some mm-hmm. people really like to see the quilting, but I feel like if you see this little pocket of green <laughs> here and a little pocket of green here, it's not making a continuous picture on yeah. the back. It's, right. it's still the quilting, but it's um, it's just Everybody has their own preferences. Yeah. And I like right. a busy back. I like yeah. a kind of medium <laughs> yeah. valued busy back. Mm-hmm. I love that. Awesome. <laughs> and cream thread, like I use cr- a cream and, and an off white on yours. And I mean, everything, <laughs> every every piece of fabric you guys have put out, it goes well. I mean, uh-huh. I, yeah. I don't have to yeah. switch it up. Yes, or, no. Yeah. No. Wow. Well, this, this has been awesome. I yeah. feel like we've kind of... <laughs> Covered everything. We, we uh, let me tell you, we've been trying to get these guys here for a long time. <laughs> High demand. High demand. Oh, no, no. And, uh, and we've had so many requests for both of you too. So well, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Bi- I was gonna say, Billy, do you have a question? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh is he coming in the video? I'm gonna steal your mic, Chelsea. Oh. Sorry. I, I didn't I didn't think I would be asking a question, so I didn't leave myself a mic. <laughs> so, oh, okay. I have I have a qu- couple questions for for you, Marion, because you mentioned you you leave. I'm I don't know anything about this, right? So <laughs> uh, you leave the room after you put the quilt on. Yeah. You can. I've, I don't know if I should. I can cut That's this okay. out too. Okay. But <laughs> my my mom and sister rave about both of your quilting. So oh, I know you. there's something even if you're leaving the room. And maybe it's just all in the preparation prior to putting it on the machine. Well, no. Is that what makes your quilting so tight and, and good? No, and... I have to tighten it up. And okay. But when I start a row, I can leave. It, the sewing machine's going because I'm computerized. So okay. it's just going. So I can walk out of the room. Most of my rows are usually 40 minutes to 50 minutes a row sometimes. Okay. So I start it, and it just goes to the end, and it stops. And then I come back in and restart the next row. Okay. And it's okay. not like she ran to the post office no. she might be out sewing a quilt in the other area okay yeah. so or not, cooking dinner yeah. or yeah. Okay. yes, yes. you can hear it if it stops or yeah. right yes, yes. Yeah. i listen for i'm very at night i'm i'm watching tv and i'll even mute it and to see if it's still still running because when you yeah. said that i'm like well that's that's like the easiest money in the world then if i, if I could just <laughs> put something on and leave because uh, you know, it but, is and that's why i do edge to edge too. <laughs> but, but i know i know a, yes. i know you have talent with like that's not mm-hmm. i know you've you've done and then i, I could never do what but I could never do free motion. But, yeah. Never but say no. I, but maybe my fiance, who she's very artistic and mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. a lot of good things. But because um, when we talked to Lisa Bonji, and I know her sons got mm-hmm. into that. And d- does he, do you know if he does? They free do mo- edge to edge. Okay, they do edge yeah. to edge. Computerized, yeah. computerized, yeah. Stuff. computerized okay. edge to edge. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And All they right. may customize it too. But, yeah. and, you know, 
just so you, like customize just means I'm going to put a specific design in that patch and that patch and that patch where edge to edge is it's a pattern that goes from one side of the quilt to the other. Yeah, That's okay. just yeah. an all yeah. over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. Well, thank you for <laughs> giving me the, the, that time. So. <laughs> thank you. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> that cracks me up, though, too, because it's like, all right, I'm out and going to the mall. Like, <laughs> go ahead and doing some shopping. <laughs> uh, Good job. <laughs> well, that was the reason why I did buy the computerized. I just didn't yeah. want to be you know, tied. And exactly. there are times when I think, oh, geez, I should have a second machine. But I just bought a new house, and there still isn't room in there for two machines. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, I just, I feel like for me, um, I like the creative aspect of being able to go in and just mm -hmm. like Marion, she isn't tired of doing what she's doing. I'm not either. Sometimes I might be more inspired than others. Um, you know, you, you have to be able to stand there for a long time yeah. and, yeah. you know, sometimes your body aches or, you know, especially after moving, you know, lifting <laughs> boxes and shoulders, it was hard to get out there and stand for long hours yeah. at a time. But yeah. usually I always try to have something loaded so that I can be in there quilting on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like what you said, like, sometimes I'm more inspired than others. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the same yes. thing with our piecing too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you're more inspired to sew a quilt. Yeah, so totally. That, that's a great takeaway. you have another question? Can you yeah. repeat the question, the mic mom? Is, the, is there machines that do both? Uh, mine does both. Yeah. Oh. I can unlatch the belts and then I can freehand. I can. Yes. Okay, yes. Awesome. But I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but your, yours, obvious, yours can do freehand or computer? No, I do not. Have, oh, I could, oh, okay. I could yeah. upgrade mine oh, okay. to be a computer. But when I'm doing an edge to edge with a pantograph, it's still my hand You're guiding tracing, yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. There's still a little laser it. that right. points down on the pattern on the back side of the table right. and you guide the laser light. So that's how I learned how to do some of those motions is because mm -hmm. I was following that design and that's using hard. a laser light. Yeah. Yeah. I've gone over to her house and like, let me do that. And I yeah. can't I, if it's a curve, mine is straight lines. You know, yeah. I can't, yeah. I yeah. don't have that. I will tell you that if a pant, a panto or an edge to edge has a star or something that has points on it, I feel I'm better off freehanding that because my yeah. stars look like starfish when I'm on oh, the back. Okay. So like the edges yeah. get a little rounded. Um, you know, sometimes I, it I just depends mistakes. on the point. Right. You know, I've had computer issues from time to time, just knock on wood, I don't. But there's times I've called her and she's had, she's come over and freehand a section, you know, wow. because it's so difficult for me to fix a certain part or mm -hmm. right. get it lined back uh, up. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. there's plenty of times I've, like, wow. <laughs> Help. We work together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When when we actually went to our first market to present our fabric lines, uh, dad was like, hey, you got to come check out these long arm machines. And I think he, in his mind, was like, Chelsea could do the long arming thing. Yeah. And I was actually very intimidated by it just because messing around with it the first time. So I like that you said for maybe listeners out there that are mm -hmm. thinking of it, you've got to practice. It's mm -hmm. not... One right. time might be intimidating, yeah. but either either yeah. freehand or computer, you yeah. still have to practice. Um, but yeah, it's any you can do it. Anybody and there's really... lots of classes. I mean, mm -hmm. there's tons of YouTube videos about how to maintain your machine. So if yeah. you have Bob intention, I mean, there's so much more out there now than in 2005 when I ordered my machine. Even yeah, so. Mm -hmm that support that you can get either on the internet or from other people that offer classes and things like that. There's lots of um, options out there. And usually your dealer, yeah. you know, offers support um, and training and those kinds of things when you're having an issue that you can't figure out by yourself. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Wow. This has been so informational <laughs> and so much fun. Uh, we have just enjoyed it. and. Let's see. Our next podcast will be on, on February, Monday, February 28th. Yep. Uh, so we will see you then. And that will actually be your 50th episode. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, it wow. will be our 50th episode. Oh, that's what? cool. Wow. That's very, very cool. All right. Congratulations. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, We're thanks. just so grateful that, yeah, you guys. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, and thanks yeah. for having us. <laughs> and thanks so much for stopping by. Yeah.